Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. The game footage on your screen is Pyre. I will get a review out for this game hopefully within the next few days, but I don't want it misconstrued what game is on your screen, as I've seen in the past multiple people that watch my videos on mobile devices accuse me of impropriety for not citing the game being played, even though I list the game using YouTube's systems and for some reason, YouTube doesn't display that on mobile devices, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, we might continue, yes? Now, for decades, arguments have been waged over the benefits or detriments of video games for a variety of reasons. Over the past 25 to 30 years, people have ascribed video games with real-world violence, and it is a belief that it is held to this day by a great many people in spite of the countless scientific studies that can find no correlation between video games and violent actions. However, there are recent studies whose findings were released in the publication Molecular Psychiatry that describe some interesting, if ultimately unsurprising, results and effects on the brain's hippocampus. The study concluded that first-person shooter games such as Call of Duty and the Battlefield series reduces gray matter within the hippocampus whereas 3D platformer games increase gray matter within the hippocampus. Now, the reason for this is the mechanics of those games rely much more on short-term memory and the more reactionary parts of the brain. This twitch shooter mechanic relies on muscle memory and reflexes much more than it does deductive reasoning and long-term memory. Now, this is significant because of the hippocampus' role in long-term memory means that a smaller hippocampus could cause a person to run a higher risk of some neurological illnesses such as Alzheimer's, depression, and schizophrenia. Alternatively, those portions of the brain that control short-term memory and reflex actions, the caudate nucleus, if I'm saying that right, is actually strengthened by first-person shooter games while the hippocampus suffers. Now, this is one of those situations where, while it's good to see some scientific research to back this up, I've been seeing a large number of publications out there state that video games have been proven to cause brain damage, when this is in fact not the case at all. It is a fascinating trend to see so many people either completely misunderstand the data or deliberately twist the meaning of the results to suit their own ends in order to continue painting a narrative in which video games are harmful. It is much the same as people still maintaining that video games cause violence. Those people maintain a stubborn stance in the fact of all scientific research to the contrary. The fact of the matter is, video games are a form of entertainment, the now largest and most utilized form of entertainment in the world. There is no direct correlation between video games and violence, just as there is no direct correlation between video games and actual brain damage, as news sources would suggest. Yes, shooter games cause a shrinkage of the hippocampus, but 3D platformers also cause an increase in size. Those two factors together are significant, and I'll tell you why. This is purely a natural result of the stimuli the brain is being subjected to. And it's been known for an extremely long time that video games being played have a direct correlation to hand-eye coordination. This is essentially the same thing. Your brain receives exercise by way of the input that it receives, much as a person who runs every day will have much stronger legs than a person who only does push-ups every day. Different portions of the body being exercised will strengthen while others atrophy due to a lack of utilization and we can see this effect being played out as a result of this scientific study. A game that forces the player to rely on faster reflexes and short-term memory are of course going to strengthen those portions of the brain. Conversely, those same games do not make use of a great many of other areas of the brain and so those will slowly atrophy, more so the portions of the brain that control long-term memory as a result. The same can be said of games that do force a greater reliance on long-term memory and problem solving. That area of the brain will strengthen while the portions of the brain that controls faster reflexes and short-term memory, or what is termed the autopilot portion of the brain, will weaken due to inactivity. But this is not brain damage. Those portions of the brain can be strengthened merely by making sure they're active. Balance in all things, it would seem. In order to accomplish this, gamers need only become variety gamers not relying on or only playing a single genre or style of game, like Twitch shooters or strategy games alone. What this research tells me is that experiencing a wide variety of styles and types of games are still actually a benefit to gamers. So play your Twitch shooters, but also play strategy games as well. Play platformers and also RPGs. Each can provide a benefit. Much like a well-rounded exercise regime can strengthen your entire body, a well-rounded variety of games being played can strengthen your mind as well. 
Many publications see this as a negative, focusing only on the atrophy that playing too much of a single game type can cause to the portions of the brain that remain unused. However, this is very much a showing as well that there is now scientific evidence that different types of games can and will strengthen different portions of the brain depending on the type of game being played. Once again, gaming proves itself to be an amazing thing, if utilized properly, and of course, with anything, binging can and will cause harm. Thankfully, it's harm that can easily be recovered from by simply exercising that portion of the brain more, or in other words, by playing more varied types of games. As always, please do let me know what you think down in the comments below. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.